Hi there and welcome to a new video in which we're gonna be checking out Hightem 3D which is basically one of the best AI power 3D model generators okay I've ever personally tried okay why do I like it so much first of all because it really provides a lot of precision like check here this comparison between other tools and Hightem 3D this one is way more precise it feels way more game ready okay for example check out this other dragon that they have over here so they also have a lot of surface fidelity as once here they've generated like this kind of super complex engine and it has been able to do it amazingly well nothing looks weird nothing looks uh like not usable uh so it's super amazing we have here some examples some of these ones are for gaming itself so we have like this kind of doll over here this vehicle and as you can see just from an image you can generate these models or take a look at this amazing weapon this kind of axe um really really amazing um and what I really love also about the platform is the simplicity. Some um, similar softwares, okay, they have like a maybe a complex UI or, or many steps that you have to follow in order to generate your models. But in this case, everything is way more straightforward. The first thing I have to know that you have a general mode and you also have a portrait mode. So it's pretty simple, okay? Portrait, okay, maybe we are not really gonna use it a lot. It's exactly meant for that, um, so it's not meant, for example, uh, to be 100% used for generating characters, even though you can try to generate a character and maybe the AI in the background will do it correctly, but this is specifically for a portrait of a face, for example. So this is for other purposes, maybe not a lot for game development itself, but it's there and the general is for basically anything else that is not a portrait. Still for both types, as you can see, the interface is super simple. You have an image to 3D mode in which you basically upload one image and it generates a 3D model based on that. So for example, these, um, these generations that we have over here are basically using, a, well, not this one because that wasn't based on an image. So let me actually look for the other example I wanted to show you, which is this one, okay. Or the other mode that you have is multi-view to 3D. And this one goes a step deeper because not only can you provide one image, but you can provide up to four. The only one that is 100% required is the front view, but you can also provide a back, left, and right view. This is meant to um, get precision or to take precision to the next level, okay? Because of course, the more information the AI has, the better the output is gonna be. Always remember, the better the input, the better the output, okay? Um, and once again, this applies for both general and portrait. Now, more options that we have over here, once again, very simple. We have versions over here. So currently I'm using 1.5, which is the newest, but you also have version uh, one, okay? Of course, like right now, if, it is, if this one is the newest, there is no real reason to be using one. Uh, and the other, the other uh, another thing that you can modify is the resolution. Of course, the, the bigger the resolution, the more time it's gonna take, the more credits uh, it's gonna cost, okay? But the, um, the final result is gonna be better, okay? So this really depends on a lot of things. Personally, okay, I recommend that if you really want something um, very good, something that can actually be used with mostly no modifications in a game, I recommend these last two, okay? Um, something to note also is that Hightem 3D, what really makes it stand out from the competition is that it really provides a lot of precision, uh, as you can see over here, if we compare it to other tools. So it's not an AI uh, 3D modeling generator that will take uh, three seconds to generate a model and that's all no it will actually take all the time that it needs to generate something that is actually useful so maybe instead of taking one minute it could take 10 minutes but the result will actually be worth it because uh, take into account this if you spend just 10 15 minutes but with that you have solved the issue of not having an actual character or an enemy that's actually worth it because if you had to create it yourself or look for it online or use another AI tool, uh, which will take a lot of iterations, you'd actually end up uh, end up spending way more time. Um, so that's what I also wanted to point out. And the last thing here for the general mode, you can also um, select the texture. So the texture are basically the, the colors, let's say, of, of the model. So once again, for game development, we have probably want this on. So uh, what I'm gonna be using right now is this multi-view mode, and I'm gonna first of all be uploading the front view. I have this, uh, concept images over here of a zombie so I'm gonna be trying to generate an enemy so this one is the front of course um, this is gonna just take a couple of seconds in order to be uploaded there it is uh, we'll have the back view 
okay? And I will basically end up um, adding the other two views. So here it is, okay? Uh, in this case, I'm gonna go with the highest resolution, okay, which is this one. Uh, as you can see, of course, it's gonna be the most the most expensive generation, but uh, we'll probably see that the result is very good if we compare it to other uh, resolutions. And also, if you're really using multi-view to 3D, it probably means that you want a lot of accuracy. So at least for me, wouldn't have that much sense to uh, generate, draw, or think of four different views, for example, and not being able to uh, spend as much credits as required. Because if not, maybe you, you do have very good concepts, but if you select not here, maybe the best model, uh, the AI is not able to actually create something good enough. Okay, so I really recommend that if you're using multi-view, uh, go all in, basically use the best model as possible. And of course, version 1.5 and texture on. So I'm now uh, gonna press generate, okay? And this is just gonna take a couple of minutes. So as you can see, there it has started, so let's leave it there. So here is the final generation that we've got. As you can see, it's super amazing, okay? The accuracy, it did take uh, considerable minutes, but considering the high quality that this has, okay? I think it's completely worth it okay so uh, in this interface uh what we can uh, see over here well first of all with the left mouse click you can kind of pan this camera around uh you can um see the model with the texture on that we've generated if you haven't generated the texture this is how it would look like but once again if you want to have it like game ready um you would you would, you would have to generate it with the texture you can uh, see a normal line and wireframe mode as well uh so it's cool that you have all those pre-visualization methods and you also have like the different reference images that uh, you have uploaded and you also have some information about the geometry itself. Now over here what we have is uh, the format, so you can see it supports various formats. Me personally what I think is the best thing to use in Encoded is GLB because this format already has like all the textures and everything applied so it's ready to be dropped into Goded and start using the model. But do take into account if you want to use it for other purposes, edit it in other place, or you just want it in other format, you can select it over here. Now, maybe you want it in FBX, you can select it. Uh, but once again, in my case, let's go with GLB. You also have three free retries. So if you want a different generation, you can try it out. But I think that this one is very good. Um, and you can basically then press download, which will uh, exactly do that. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is gonna be super simple. I will uh, drag this file and I will drop it inside of my uh, Godot project right over here. Okay, let's give it a second for it to import. It shouldn't really take that long. Um, so let's wait over here. Sometimes Godot literally crashes when we want to import something from <laughs> external. Externally, okay, so uh, we are really accustomed to this. And okay, here it is. It, it ended up uh, importing the model. Uh, once again, Goda doesn't like that you import things uh, some, sometimes externally that you don't directly drop them in, in the file explorer or basically using the file explorer, but well, uh, here it is. So what we ended up having are three files. We have the GLB itself, which if we double click, it's gonna open. It's literally the exact same thing that we've seen in the preview over there. As you can see, super good quality, really. Uh, and then we have the uh, different textures, okay, that having already imported with the GLB. That's the, that's the the cool thing, okay, so everything is already applied. Uh, so what I'm gonna do super quickly is just create a character body 3D, okay? I'm gonna drag here the, um, the model so that we can basically see it. That's cool. And once that is done, let me put it in zero, zero. Okay, of course it has no light, no environment, so that's why it looks like a little bit dark. Uh, another thing I wanna really be adding is a collision shape, and I'm gonna add a capsule over here because I want to create a very basic character. The good thing is that with Godot and with the character body 3D, what we have is a template for basic movement. So this is like platformer movement, uh, as you can see for, for gravity games. Uh, and we can basically press create, okay? And here we have some code. We can call this object player. I'm gonna just save it over here. Uh, another thing I wanna do is create another scene, a 3D scene, of course. I'm gonna call it main. And I'm gonna, with this button, instantiate the character, the player that we've just created. So here we have our character. I'm gonna move it up a little bit. I'm gonna add a static body 3D and inside a mesh instance, I just want to simulate a very simple ground over here. Let's make this 100 by 100. Or actually, it's a little smaller, maybe 50, 50. 
there are things very good. Um, I also added a very simple collision inside. And the last things that I want to add are in these three points over here, add the sun to the scene, which is basically this directional light. You can position this wherever you want. Uh, the only thing that actually has an impact on the game is the rotation. This is like the, the sun, okay? So if we go to the rotation tool, as you can see, this will dramatically change the game itself. So, but I believe that's something that it's like the default value is perfectly fine. And the last thing we need is an environment, okay? So this handles even like more things such as the lights, um, the sky, the background, a well, lot of things. Uh, but with that, it's more than enough. Uh, but the last thing we do need to add is the camera, okay? So that uh, we actually move and, and render something or have an object that can render. So just by using here the move tool and rotate tool, I will position maybe somewhere here. As you can see, we have a nice preview. And with this, we should be able in literally a matter of five minutes, have a 3D model moving around in gold. Okay, so that's something very, very amazing. Okay, uh, so let's give it a second. Once again, first time that you play a gold game, it can take some seconds, but shouldn't be that much. And as you can see, with the arrows, I can move around. I can even jump. Okay, and everything looks and works amazingly well. So once again, this platform is called Hightem 3D, okay, you have the direct link in the description down below. It is literally one of the best AI powered 3D model generators that I ever tried and I really recommend it a lot. See you there and bye bye!